Welcome to a Friday Reads, where I'm going to talk about what I'm reading and what I hope to get to next, you know, finish off the month, because I have not finished anything since I last checked in. I've been reading a lot. I've read many, many pages. I've probably read a thousand pages, but I have not finished anything. <laughs> and we'll get into that. I'm also going to talk a little bit about some movies and TV that we've been watching, because that's also taken up some of our time. And I've, I've you know, played a little bit more of a video game that I haven't played for weeks because I've been in a reading mood. So that's what we're going to get into in this video, starting with where has all my reading time gone? Because I've read 700 pages of The Wall of Storm, which is amazing. <laughs> I was so nervous about this book. So as I said in my TBR, this is like one of those sequels that is hyped more than other sequels. It's like, oh, Grace of Kings is good, or Grace of Kings is an okay start, but Wall of Storms. And obviously this is an aggregate, right? This is not every reader. Some readers like Grace of Kings more because it is a different project. Some people think they're about the same, right? It, it, it varies, but the vast majority of people who've read both books love Wall of Storms. I think it's kind of sort of the fan favorite in the quartet of books, if I'm right. And um, I'm part of that. It's so freaking good. <laughs> I am just, I, I think, like, I mean, I've read so much. The only reason I haven't read more is I had board games with friends on Saturday. I took some time off to myself on Monday to, like, play a video game. Like, if I had just only had reading free time, I would be done with this book by now because it's just been consuming me. Oh, Ken Liu just writes fantasy that I love. And like you guys saw in my quarter wrap up, I haven't had a new five star fantasy this year yet. Like I've had a lot of enjoyable reads, books that I'm not regretting I've read, books that have given me good feelings, but like that I can't stop reading you. I want to read you all the time. You were everything I read fantasy for book. Yeah, no, that's Wall of Storms. Wall of Storms. <laughs> it's so good. Like it's both entertaining. It has entertaining climaxes that I like, I, I love. And because I've read a lot in the speculative genre, I can see the signposts. It's like, I know where the story is probably going ish. And sometimes I'm surprised because there's more than I expected. And other times I'm like, I didn't expect us to get there that way. And on other times it's like, okay, I still knew something was coming and I'm still floored by that reveal. Like, oh my goodness. Like, oh, it's so good. Like, someone who just understands the tropes of the genres and using it while he tells his own tale, his own thought experiment. Because that's the other thing I love. This thought experiment of Dara is wild. It's completely wild and amazing. Like he already had a complicated problem. He already set up a complicated situation he wanted to explore, such as changing government systems in Dara. How do you maintain something that is sustainable without these consistent betrayals of emperors and stuff? And so at the end of Grace of Kings, we are setting up the Dandelion Dynasty. That's what the Grace of Kings is. That's its project. That's its whole thing. And now Wall of Storms is kind of, okay, how do we now with this government, what we have set up, how do we keep it from falling apart? And you think it's going one way and it still goes that way. And then there's just, there's more things added. Like, ah, it's so good. And there was like one part that reminded me of like, like first contact with aliens sort of set up. And I like love that trope so much. There are no aliens in this book, but at least not yet. I'm only 700 pages in, but it's like the skill to know that that's what you're setting up and like what that evoked in me. Like there's so much tension and suspense for me, so much dramatic irony, so much me being a fly on the wall, watching all this and wanting things. And it's a lot like reading Robin Hobb for me, where especially like Live Ship Traders, this is reminding me of what it was like to read Live Ship Traders. They are not the same. I'm not saying if you like Live Ship Traders, you would like this or vice versa. I'm just saying in terms of the, this is a 900 page book that I am like blowing through feeling. And also the idea of, I really want X to happen, but I don't think this is a story where the author is going to let me have X happen. <laughs> maybe they will, maybe they won't, right? And like, that's how I feel because there's a lot of realism here. There are a lot of characters acting in really realistic ways, which means we don't get necessarily fun things sometimes. And it's oh, so much frustration, so much good tension and frustration. It's amazing. <laughs> been buddy reading this with friends. I've been buddy reading this with Brittany, Evie, and Emma Ray. Um, so that's been really fun. And then Tammy, a Tammy Tries to Read, has just been getting all of my like live reactions on Instagram because they've already read this series. I think they've read Wall of Storms twice already. And I'm just like, oh. the first arc of this part, like part one, like if you were someone, this is this is my recommendation. If you were someone who read Grace of Kings, were like, eh, I don't know, man, that was only like fine. Like you gave it three to four stars, somewhere in that range. And you're just like, I don't know if it's really worth it. I can't imagine Wall of Storms being this big different thing for me. Maybe that's where you're at, but you also are like FOMO, the hype, everyone's loving this. Read the first part. It's only 300 some pages. And after you read that, if you don't feel the hype, I think you're safe to put it down and DNF it and be confident that you are not missing out. But like the first arc, 
the way that it climaxes, I'm just like, oh, perfection. So great. Also reminds me, maybe this is a turnoff for some people, a little bit of West Wing, if you've ever watched that show, where you just get to like see a lot of monologuing about certain things philosophically, but in the West Wing way. Like there's a lot of grandstanding in West Wing that I enjoy because of how it's set up. And that happens here too. Because I'm not going to tell you there aren't info dumps. There's not exposition dumps. There's not monologuing in Wall of Storms. There definitely is. There's also fight scenes and battles and stuff. Like there's a lot of stuff. And there are a lot of things that aren't typically perfect for me, but the way Ken Liu's setting it up, it's just so good. So that's been my reading life. That's been like 90% of my reading life is reading this book. And I haven't finished it because it's freaking huge. And you know, I, I'm reading it when I can and I'm not forcing myself to read it when I don't want to. And it's honestly a joy. It's just like everything I love reading for. Oh my God, it's so good. And I desperately would love copies, but like, I, I don't know if I want the UK ones because I hate the spines of UK books. And these are big books too. So like opening them, like I don't want to like have to deal with the you can only open it that far syndrome. Um, even though the covers are pretty, um, I will say that covers past book two for the UK reveal world building elements of the series. So if you are someone who is hyper spoiler sensitive, you know that. I actually like the US covers better, but I hate how inconsistent the, the printings are. Like the first two books have insets for their paperbacks and the later two don't. And then like the hardbacks have different spines. So I think part of me is just going to like, if I ever own them, it's just going to be the eBooks. It's just where I'm at. <laughs> but uh, they're, they're, they're great. It's quickly becoming a favorite series of all time. Truly, I'm already thinking about how to organize the rest of my TBRs for this summer to like get through this series because I'm having a blast because it's that perfect combination of thematic exploration thought experiment with characters I love and a plot that I'm just like on the edge of my seat for. Like not many authors can do that, especially for this many pages. And I'm ready. I'm totally ready for the next book, even knowing some of the elements that might be in other books that other people don't like that I think are going to work for me. So yeah, that's one thing. Um, the other thing that I'm working on is still Bone Shard Emperor. That's been my audiobook. I'm only a third of the way through it. So further than I was last time I checked in, but I haven't been doing that much audiobook time. And it's good, except like how to be vague without spoiling things. So there's still a lot of cool world building. I'm definitely in this series more for like the four star fun fantasy book experience. Like that's all I'm expecting from it. I'm not really expecting more. And if it surprises me, it surprises me. But that's generally what I expected this series to be for me, which is also kind of why I went the audiobook route because I thought it'd be fun entertainment for that part of my life. And it's doing that. There's still some cool world building I want to uncover, some reveals, because like that's why I'm here. Like I have a lot of questions about this world. And the characters are fun. They're serviceable and like, you know, there, there, there's stuff going on. But two of our main characters are, are in the same area now. And there are interpersonal developments that I am not, not a fan of, but I'm not a fan of it. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it while being spoiler free. But I, I think, really misjudged the age of one of our characters, and I'm now very, like, confused about certain setups. I think it's just a case of, I don't think this is necessary. Like, I actually really liked these character interactions until this extra spice was added in, and now I'm like, ah, I don't think this was necessary. And I'm normally not one of those people, like, a lot of times when people have reviews where they're like, I didn't think this was necessary, blah, 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 I'm usually like, well, I read the same book, and, like, I actually thought it really added a lot, and in this case, I am... I am of the opinion that I'm just currently like, this came out of nowhere to me. I don't like it. Anyways, so that's me being really hopefully vague. I don't know. But I'm only early days. Hopefully, you know, Andrew Stewart plays with it in a way that I find at least not annoying. <laughs> that's my hope. Uh, and I hope we just lean into more of the dread of the world building because that is why I am here for that series. And hopefully I just have more audiobook time. Um, but the other book I had to pick up because the live show is now Saturday. I think last week I said Friday, but it's on Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern time for Morningstar. Now, keep in mind, these videos I film on Wednesday. You're seeing it on Friday. Um, so at the, at the time of filming this, let's see, I'm only this far into Morningstar. Um, so I have many, many pages left to go, like about 400, a little less than 400 pages. So I really need to prioritize reading it. But all I want to do is read Wall of Storms. That's like my biggest issue right now. It's like, yes, I can read Morningstar. And it's not a bad book at all. It's just Wall of Storms is just so good. But I still like, it's not like I'm almost done with it. Like I'm on page 700 and my Kindle still has, says I have four hours left. Like, which is like a lot of reading time. Um, so Morningstar though, I'm enjoying it. 
Uh, I really love the first part. The opening part is like amazing. It has everything I usually love from this trilogy in one spot. It has high tension action. It has quiet moments. It has character interactions. I love that. Um, this next part, I remembered it being slower on my first read and it is still slower here until like a big bombastic thing happened and that just happened and I'm like, ah, oh, I need to finish that. But then of course, silly, silly me. Uh, I was about to keep reading because I was trying to read like 100 pages a day-ish and I'm now listening to the audiobook while I'm reading it because I was having some issues with some of the like transitionary scenes and stuff like that. And so I was doing that and then suddenly we're like, hey, can we do the live show on Saturday instead of Friday? And then my brain's like, cool, I don't have to read as much today, Wall of Storms. <laughs> Because that is how much I am loving Wall of Storms. But I, I'm going to read a little more of Morningstar today um, and just keep going. It's just also really interesting how much I don't remember. Like, I know where we end up. Like, I, I do. I know where we end up. I don't know how we get there. I don't know who currently knows what or who is currently on whose side. It's, it's a whole big black box. And I know enough, I think, to be extra nervous. Like, I think I am more stressed reading it now than I was on my first read. It's fascinating to me, absolutely fascinating, because I just know enough to know when to be stressed. It's like giving me, like, horror movie syndrome. Like, this isn't a horror book, but, you know, like, when you're watching a horror movie, it's like, oh, the music is telling me something's about to happen. That's what my memory's doing, <laughs> and it's a little odd. So those are things I've been actively reading. I have not touched anything else that I've talked about since I last checked in, because, like I said, all I've been doing is consuming Wall of Storms. So I, I want to finish those by the end of the month, and the, my rest of the month TBR includes finishing Universal Love, which I am, maybe I read a few stories of this, I'm like halfway through. Do I remember anything about the last couple stories? Oh, Purple Heart was interesting. Pur like, so I think what I noticed about this um, series, like I said last time, is they are interesting stories. They don't really reside in my brain, but I don't mind being there while I read it. So that's, that's completely fine reading experience for me. Like it's okay, doesn't need to have a lasting impression to be worth my time, but it also means like, you know, these aren't, like, the deepest things. They haven't changed my worldview. I'm not, like, thinking about them after the fact. But while I'm in them, it's a really easy writing style. And, you know, it makes me feel productive as a reader. You know, sometimes it's just nice to finish things. So we have half of this left. Probably once I finish Wall of Storm, I'll pick this back up because that's my other buddy read with Evie. I also need to finish Sun in the Void. I'm only a third of the way through that. I only got through part one of that. And I really need to keep going so I can solidify my opinion since, you know, if you saw last week's check-in, I've been very like, eh, I don't know what type of reading experience this is going to be for me because I'm having character connection problems. But I do think part one is a setup. And so now I think that was like the prequel or large prologue to where the story is going and I might be able to be more invested in the characters with where the plot is going. We'll, we'll find out. I have some hopes because I do believe one of my friends is having a good time with it. We'll see. There is, a, there is a lot of black box text in my Discord that I can't click on yet that I really want to. So if you end up having an arc of this or when you do get a copy of this to read, we have a book chat of it in my Discord that people have been reading it together. And so that always makes me want to read it. And then, of course, the book that I definitely want to read by the end of the month and I just haven't picked up yet. So this is the only book that I haven't started yet that I would like to read by the end of the month is Velocity Weapon. And this is also one of those things where I am... I really want to pick it up because everyone who has started reading this in the Discord has been having a really fun time. <laughs> and I just, I, I want to join in. I, I want to. Um, it's just a uh, wall of storms. What can I say? Wall of storms, man. <laughs> and then, of course, I need to finish Morningstar. And I, I do feel hesitant about reading Morningstar and Velocity Weapon at the same time, not because I think they're the same thing, but just, I don't know. I, it feels like they, they overlap in genre space, potentially. I could be really wrong. Um, it's not that it'll stop me, but I probably won't read Velocity Weapon until after I finish Morningstar. And if I have time, somehow, I don't think I will. I think this is it, because next weekend, I'm out of town for a few days, and I'm not going to force myself to read while I'm out of town with friends, because I'm hanging out with friends. Like, I have plane rides, so I can read on plane rides, potentially. But chances are, I'm not going to have a lot of read time. But if somehow I have time... I will continue on with the Vorkosigan saga. If not, I continue this into next month, not the end of the world. But that's like the state of my reading life. And I think it's in a great place because I'm freaking loving what I'm reading right now, right? Like, it's, <laughs> I just wish I had more time. <laughs> that's what I wish. Um, in terms of movies, I recently saw the Dungeons and Dragons movie. Wonderful. I am, I'm living for pulpy sci-fi and fantasy getting a budget. Like, I know people didn't like Thor Love and Thunder, 
I had a great time with Thor Love and Thunder. Thor Love and Thunder is like campy sci-fi with a budget and I was like yes and I think it's funny. Um, Dungeons and Dragons I think I like a little less than Thor Love and Thunder if I'm comparing campy quippy things to each other but it's truly really fun to watch if you play Dungeons and Dragons. I mean Ryan watched it having not played Dungeons and Dragons and he had a fun time. It's like it's exactly what's written on the tin like it's it's a Dungeons and Dragons adventure story as a movie. Like, if you've played Dungeons and Dragons, you know the first plot you think of, like the first plan of attack, it's not gonna work. <laughs> so you have to think of a new one, and then a new one, and that's what happens in the story. And it's found family, and you have all the archetypes of the characters, and there's really fun banter, and I really love the dynamics between these characters, and it's visually really fun. I had a really good time. So that's what we did Friday. That was really fun. And then we've also started watching Succession because the hype has gotten to us. I'm actually surprised it's taken this long for Ryan to force me to start watching Succession. Like, I mean, I'm all here for drama, so it's really not a big deal. Although another thing that's really interesting is the first half of Wall of Storms is really thematically connected to Succession and only because we're discussing the idea of how do you transfer power to the next generation for a bit. And I'm just like... <laughs> interesting although where I love a lot of characters in Wall of Storm Succession's an interesting time because like I hate everyone <laughs> like I have some characters that I enjoy seeing on screen like I think oh you're just a fun character to have in scenes I think you bring a lot of life to the scene and I keep telling Ryan it's like okay if we kill them off or remove them I just need someone to replace them because I truly like that's what's kind of fun is there are a lot of stakes and tensions for these characters but I, I don't care about them like pff, woe is them <laughs> so it's been really fun um, so that's been like the drama we've been watching. And then a thing I've been doing this month, I haven't talked about it on the channel, but I've talked about it a lot in my discord is every day this month, I've been consuming Spanish media for about 40 minutes to an hour. That's been like my goal ish. And this is outside of Duolingo. Duolingo, I still do that every day, but it doesn't count. Um, so the idea would be, do I want to listen to a podcast, read a book, watch a TV show, consume Spanish media for that amount of time to just help build vocabulary, get used to some grammar, etc. And I've been playing around with a lot of things. I've watched a lot of Nailed It in Mexico. I've kind of dabbled in some podcasts and TV shows, but the TV show I've kind of like stuck with and has actually like I've become very invested in is The House of Castamar. Or is it The Cook of Castamar? I can't remember. I think the Spanish name is The Cook of Castamar, but I think the English name might be The House. I don't know. Here's, here's a picture. It's on Netflix because Netflix, you know, all of its faults aside, has actually a really good Spanish collection. <laughs> So that's why actually we were watching like all of the things I've been dabbling in. Like I think I dabbled in Money Heist, which I like, but I think I need to be a little bit better at my Spanish because they talk really fast in that show. And I'm letting myself have Spanish subtitles, but not English subtitles. So, you know, I, I, still, which is still a challenge. It definitely makes it easier than just listening, but like it's still a challenge. And the House of Castamar, I don't know how many people would like it, like, but it's 1700s historical drama. And I'm, 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 I'm very invested. It has made plot and character decisions that I was not expecting. And I, I think the biggest weakness for me is it's, it's a love story drama too. I guess I don't think I would call it a soap opera, even though it is dramatic and things like that. But I don't think it's got that proceduralness to it that I associate with a soap opera. But um, the, the cook, it's called the cook of Castamar. So one of our characters is the cook. And then we have the Duke who has lost his wife in the first scene. So if you don't like fridging, I mean, that happens like within five minutes of this show. So it's, it's not, it, it, in some ways it's being kind of more unique than I'm giving it credit for, but in other ways it's like what you would expect to be in this type of drama. And so he's, you know, alone. He does need an heir. He needs to marry. And so like that whole plot's happening. Like they're trying to set him up with this one lady and stuff like that. But he's, through reasons I don't quite understand, has fallen in love with the cook. And the cook, I think, kind of has feelings for him. This is the part that's the weakest part of the show. And I think it's supposed to be the motivating factor. But I am way more in on the side characters. I am way more into the whole thing. Or I actually do like both of them individually and the arcs that surround their stories. The cook is way stronger than the duke, in my opinion. And also, there are a lot of pretty people in this show. And the duke is just very not pretty in comparison. <laughs> Which I know is really shallow. But like... I, he's actually a really good actor. Like, I don't mind him as an actor, but it's just like, there are a lot of exceptionally pretty people 
and like I just think he's very average looking in comparison and old he's much older than a bunch of people and he has to be significantly older than the cook in my head but anyways um I've been emotionally gut punched in t moments that I wasn't expecting it's been really interesting because sometimes I think I'm not supposed to know what's happening because it's normal drama sort of tension and other times it's like I think I just don't know what's happening because I have not translated that conversation correctly. <laughs> and it's really interesting to see when I catch up and what is intentional and what is me just like me failing at understanding the media in Spanish. But it's a good time. Uh, so, it, you know, if you want something familiar and this is maybe a genre you like and you're working on your Spanish, would maybe recommend. But like, also maybe check trigger warnings if you have any because it does sometimes get a little dark, I, I think. Like, there was a scene earlier on that I was like, what happened there? And then it was also a language problem where I'm like, I can't tell if that was consensual or not. I can't tell. I, any, and I still don't really know. Oh, so <laughs> just, just know that the show can be pretty dark. But sh that show's taken a lot of my time because it's like, you know, 45 to 50 minutes a night that I'm watching it. And also, in case you didn't know, it's playoff season and um, I live in Boston and I root for the Bruins and the Celtics. I don't know how I got roped into rooting for the Celtics, but I actually do root for the Celtics. Like, I actually like the Celtics as a team, but it hurts my Cleveland heart. But I've been also getting to watch the Cavs. The Cavs are my first hope. The Cavs are who I really want to make it. And then it's Celtics. And then the Bruins, I don't have any other hockey team I root for. And so far, all three are doing well. The Cavs... The Cavs are their own worst enemy in that first game. They came around in the second game, but in that first game... The number of turnovers. I'm just like, guys, guys, I get very passionate about basketball. It's like the only sport I really care about. Anyways, so this is Friday Reads. I know we talked about a lot of stuff that are not books. Oh, the video game, Witcher. Um, another thing that's been sneaking up on me in terms of plots, like for a while, it's like, I don't really care about these plots, but like some plots I'm, I'm really getting into and like, yeah, it's, it's, it's been really fun. Um, I'm trying to figure out the balance of continuing the main quest and then doing side quests, you know, the, the perpetual balance of an open world game, but it's really fun. Way easier than Horizon. <laughs> I'm way less scared and I'm way more able to handle situations. And I do like, like, there was one quest where I just had to get someone's goat. <laughs> like, there's just some really silly things you get to do and I'm enjoying it. All right, if you want to leave an emoji. Oh. I, I storm, a storm cloud, because wall of storms, guys, wall of storms. I'm so glad that for me, the hype was justified, truly. And otherwise, like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.